Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. It is the 24th of July and I've just been looking at the chart and there is a really beautiful kite formation there. And that is um, sort of being formed with the sun at the top of the chart um, or the top of the kite at two degrees of Leo today, opposing Pluto at zero um, of Aquarius. And then the sun is in sextile to Black Moon Lilith at two degrees of Libra and Sedna at one degree of Gemini. So Black Moon Lilith and Sedna are in a very harmonious trine. And we've got this quite sort of pat pattern forming with these four bodies um, in the chart. So kites are always really beautiful because they sort of give us the opportunity to rise above, to kind of um, embody that lightness of being, to be able to see a bigger picture, a different perspective. So, you know, that is always a really positive um, kind of formation to have in the chart. But with, um, if we think about Pluto, Sedna and Black Moon Lilith, they are all sort of bodies that are very much about going down to sort of look into what is hidden, what lies beneath the surface. Obviously with Sedna, it is very much releasing what has been frozen in time and um, to do with information through Gemini. We've talked a lot about Sedna. Black Moon Lilith is about our shadow, where we've perhaps felt rejected or ashamed. Um, and certainly, you know, the stuff that we don't necessarily want to look at. And then, of course, Pluto is the god of the underworld. So this is about exploring what lies beneath the surface in order to be transformed and so that it can come to light. Um, but what's even more interesting is that all um, three, well, three out of these four bodies are also act being activated with galactic alignment. So Sedna is still very close to the Pleiades. So we have the Pleiadian or 5D consciousness, unconditional love, heart-centered energy coming through. And Black Moon Lilith is right on the super galactic center. So this really is about stretching um, our understanding way beyond where we have perhaps gone before. And it is also very close to the south node. So again, this is very much about letting go of things that are no longer supporting our sort of evolution and our growth. And then Pluto at zero, Aquarius, you know, it's been back and forth over this point a couple of times and it's still, it's going to come back um, and well into Aquarius for good for the next 20 years in November. But Pluto is conjoined with Altair and the Aquila constellation. So this is very much eagle energy. It's about having the courage to be able to look at perhaps what is making us feel a little bit uncomfortable or ashamed. And um, it's very much conf um, confidence and courage for the shadow work that is required and Aladfar in the Lyra constellation. So this is linked to our human galactic history. Aladfar in particular has connections with the Lyran wars and a lot of trauma that we are holding within our cellular bodies and our cellular memory. Um, so, you know, this is not necessarily um, comfortable or easy um, energy to work through, but there is, you know, with the fact that we are working with a kite formation and with the sun right at the top of this kite, you know, in Leo, so in its home sign, shining a light, giving us courage to be ourselves. So, you know, there is this real sort of sense that I'm feeling that, you know, we are going through a time where we're having to look at what's hidden. There is stuff that has been buried, repressed, um, shut away, locked away, coming up to be seen. And it is not easy work. It is not not for the faint of heart by any stretch. But, you know, this fact that the sun is shining its light on these three bodies as we do this work is just so um, comforting and empowering. You know, the sun is effectively like a light for us to to sort of show us the way to give us that warmth, that heat um, and that, that courage ultimately is very much about courage. There is a lot of courage here in the chart. 
And, you know, the scent for me, Leo in its fuller expression is about stepping into the wholeness of who we are. So when we feel whole, when we feel complete, when we manage to transcend that disconnection from our true selves um, and from other parts of ourselves that perhaps we have turned our back on or repressed, you know, or cast into the shadow. So it's when we do the shadow work, when we shine our light on what we've um, buried and hidden and rejected and disconnected from that is where the wholeness comes in and when we feel whole you know there is no lack there is no low low, low self-esteem there is no fear there is no disconnection and it is from that point that feeling whole within ourselves that we can then really ascend which effectively is part of the process and the kite you know, information is helping us to do that. It's acknowledging that, you know, we need to keep our foot in the kind of lower realms at times. Um, you know, it is very much as above, so below type energies um, set up. But it is also, you know, giving us the courage and the light that is needed to guide us through these times um, as we, um, yeah, it's, it's not necessarily easy and shadow work never is. But and there is that guiding light of the sun to show us the way. So I hope that helps, you know, and if you are sort of dealing with some stuff that is perhaps less than comfortable at this time, you know, really tune into the energy of the sun and the Pleiadian energy as well. So beautiful, so heart centered, so sort of unconditionally loving and compassionate um, to guide you through and to, um, yeah, to walk with you. So I will be back soon. Lots of love.